Hi folks, welcome back to Easy Finances. I'm Wes and today we're going to be discussing maintenance on our high yield dividend pie slice. Okay, so first off for newcomers, if you're new to the channel, then I want to just go over what we're doing here real quick. And what essentially what we have with the video portfolio here, as you can see, right here. Uh, we have four styles of investing that are represented in pie slices on the M1 Finance portfolio that we have up here. I call it the video portfolio. And those four slices are, we'll straighten them up here in a little bit. We got individual dividend picks, which is uh, what I fashion myself as, individual dividend stock pick picker, and that's what I like to do, and that's probably why that's doing the best. We have growth, we have ETFs only, and we have high dividend yield, which is what we're going to be working on today, since that is the sick man of the group. We're going to be trying to straighten that up a little bit. And essentially what I do is add money twice a week. It's Monday and Thursday, $20 each day. This is what we're going to be doing throughout 2020. We're just going to try to find out what the best performer is. We've got 25% allocated to each one of those types of investing. And we're going to try to straighten this portfolio up as we go. We're starting to get a little more money into it, and we'll see how it goes. For today, like I said, we're going to be working with high yield dividend slice, and uh, we're going to get it, be getting rid of companies that don't hit our technical standards for the slice. The technical standards that I'm setting out for those slices for today, and we're going to be doing that analysis in M1 Finance over here. I'll show you exactly how to do it, but the technical standards that I have for narrowing down this slice of the pie here with these companies. We want to get rid of the ones that aren't performing and, and keep the ones that are or are likely to at least. The technical standards that I have are flat to slight increase in price over a three or five year period. So we'll take a look at, at, at that in here. And also we're going to be looking at, it has to have an already high dividend yield or steady increase in dividends over time. So those are the two standards that I have. Hopefully we can narrow this list down a little bit and get it to perform a little bit better. I do want to bring up real quick what I have. I'm going to bring this up. This is what a, a screenshot that I took for what our high yields dividend looked like before on the five year. If we take a look over here, let me shrink this down a little bit. There we go. And as we can see that we had a uh, increase over the five years of 6.53%. We have 21 holdings. We have a 5.681% yield. And we had an expense ratio of 0.08%. Now, when I'm done today, I want to hopefully improve on that. And we'll see how that goes. So going through with the first one, uh, as you can see, we have VYMI which is simply a an ETF, I should say. That's what we have 25% of the of this pie allocated to and that ETF gives us instant diversification. Uh, if we're failing in the in the picks, we still have this as diversification to kind of back us out. And what I'm going to be implementing is a satellite strategy, so I'm going to have that be the main and we're going to have each one of these individual companies with a small position as satellites around around this. That, that should anchor up our account. So first off, let's go with Philips 76. Now, in the previous video that I did just before this, I did uh, pick out a few companies to look at and gave an example of what I'm gonna be doing, but this is a more in-depth video and we're gonna be doing this. So with this, if we go to the five year, we can see that it's it's got a slight loss of eight, well, that's an 8% loss over the five years. But if we look at it in recent times, three years, so one of our technical indicators here that we, we've chosen for today or that I've chosen for today is that three or five year period has to be an increase. Well, that's one heck of an increase for the three year. So that tells me in the five year they had some problems, but they've probably sorted that out. Now, this doesn't go into depth as far as uh, the numbers, and that's something that we will be doing later. We're going to trim everything up and today and then get a smaller list so that we can go ahead and indicate uh, what we want to look at to dig it deeper on on these stocks but as we see the five year the second standard that we're looking for today is that the dividends are increasing and if we scroll through it we got 34 five years ago 43 51 53 56 59 65 68 71 79 as you can see it's steadily increasing over time so that's exactly what we want 
and as far as I'm concerned, this is one that we want to keep. So Phillips 76 is a go. If we go down to Cato, review Cato details, we've got the five year, and as you can see, that's a huge loss. 59% in five years, that's, <laughs> nobody could say that's good. I don't care how much it's paying out, 7.67 cents, or percent. And uh, as you can see, it's the same with the, the three years. So, I mean, just for the fun of it, we'll look at the dividends as well, 33, 33, still staying 33 all throughout so regardless of how high that is this corporation does not meet our standards because of the three and five year deal it does have a steady dividend over time but it's really not increasing it hasn't increased in years so regardless it doesn't meet the first one so we're gonna get rid of this one right let's go with HSBC does it meet our standards let's go to five years it's down 17.72 percent three year is down 2.94 percent I can forgive the 2.94% because that's flat to slight loss. That's fine if the dividend's still high. Some of these, you might have a little wiggle room because of something flat, if it's paying an already high dividend yield, okay, well, it's still performing a function, right? But let's look at the dividends, see if it matches that. If it's flat or a loss and it's not increasing dividends, then that, that would be a game changer, right? So uh, we see in 2017, it was $1.05. One year, every year they pay out a dollar five. It looks like so fifty cents, fifty cents, dollar five, fifty cents, fifty cents, dollar five, fifty cents, fifty cents, fifty cents. So they're not increasing dividends, but it is steady. It's a steady dividend, and it's flat. So at five point one three percent, that's a judgment call. We're gonna keep it in the in the portfolio, and if we have problems with it later, and when we dig in the numbers later, we will probably. Uh, get rid of that if the numbers don't match up so that's HSBC let's go to Las Vegas Sands Corporation we've got the five-year five-year looks good at 19.23% three-year is 30% up that's fantastic let's look at the dividends 65 72 73 75 77 so we see an increase in dividends and we see an increase in in the equity value that's fantastic that's obviously something we're gonna keep BTI British American Tobacco Okay, five year down 21%. That's horrendous. Down 24% for the three years. So it doesn't meet our first uh, indicator. $3.05, $1.48, $3.02. As you can see, it occasionally pays out a big dividend. Do we care about that? No, because it doesn't, it really doesn't meet the, the first indicator. I mean, it's not just on the line or flat, it's definitely not meeting it. So BTI is definitely one we want to get rid of. Next up is GlaxoSmithKline, GSK. For the five year, it's up 10.52%. Very good. For the three year, it's up 22.8%. Uh, dividends, we have 70, starting out five years ago, 46. So what happened here? Did it cut? I don't know. We've got 58, 50, 46, 57, 49, 50. It doesn't look like these dividends are steady. But I will say, you know, when I said it's not steady, when looking back at it, it does look like it's holding steady around 50. At 4.13%, do we want to keep it? I'm not sure. If we consider 50, 50 cents steady, then yes, we want to keep it. I know it had a big 71 there, and it's 65. They have occasional big payout, but it quickly snaps down to around 50 again. But we do have a good increase on this, so it meets one the first criteria very well. The second criteria, that's uh, kind of up to judgment. If you say 50 cents is steady, then yes, we do have a couple large jumps where they, they looks like they just kind of rewarded the investor there. And uh, that's fine. We like that. That's fine when they do that. So, but it does snap back down to around 50. Not a major drop. They haven't cut huge. So that's, I would leave that in judgment. Next one up on, on the block is AT&T. Take a look at what AT&T has done over the last five years. We have 15.14% increase. Three year, we've got a 7.74% decrease though. So on the five year, yes. On the three year, no. So on the first criteria, I would say because of the five year, yes. If we were just going off the three year, no. So, you know, we'll, we'll call this one neutral as far as the first criteria. But for if the second criteria is good, then, then we'll probably keep it because the first one's neutral, the second criteria is good. We'll keep it for a while. All right, 47 on the dividends, 48, 49, 50, 51. So a steady increase, and I do know that about AT&T. They, they have a tendency to increase that dividend over time, and we do like that. With a neutral first indicator and a positive second indicator, we're going to keep AT&T. Cedar Fair 
has a five year of 17.18%. That's good. A three year of negative 13%. So again, got a positive on one and negative on another that we're gonna call that neutral. Even though 13% is, is quite a bit, isn't it? But let's look at dividends, 86. 89, 93, 94. Okay, so we do see a rise in that. So similar to uh, AT&T, we're gonna keep that for now until we dig into the numbers. Next, Royal Dutch Shell. Let's see what that's gonna do. For the five year, we have down 12.28%. For the three year, up 8.66%. So how they turn things around? Maybe. How are the dividends? 94. So a steady dividend. I gotta be honest, because it's uh, it's gas and or energy related, and we have other energy stocks. I would probably, because this is steady and not rising, even though it technically meets the second indicator, and on the first it's neutral. So if I was going off the other other ones that we did, then I would say we'd keep it, right? But also this is a foreign stock, and you have to pay. Uh, it, they do take some of the dividends back in in. Uh, as tax, foreign tax there. That weighs in on it too on this on this particular one. I'm gonna say we'll take this one out because just to make things a little less complicated and we'll take this one out. And Verizon, let's see what we have. Verizon five year, we have 30% increase, that's fantastic. Three year, 15% increase, also fantastic. Dividends, 2015 is 55, 57, 58, 59, 60. As you can see, they're going up 62 cents now. So Verizon is safe on our list. AbV, take a look at that. Five year, we've got good, 34.54%. Three year, 42.45%, that's amazing. Let's just take a look at the dividends, 49, 51, 57, 64, 96, $1.07. Wow, we've got some big increases in that dividend and this is actually a company I'm pretty excited about uh, just from looking at this and uh, I have looked at their numbers before and I like them, but we're going to dive into that in another episode as well. AGNC. Now, this is the one I used in the uh, last video as an example of a company I probably don't want to keep, and we'll just go over it real quick why. So, five year we got a negative 18%, 18.53 that is. Three year we got a negative 50 or 0.55%. And why it's not showing the, the dividends on this, I don't know. It was showing this the other day, so the dividends have disappeared on this. But what it, what I wanted to show on on this, and I showed it in the last video, is that the the dividends are declining each time too. So with declining dividends and a five year that looks like that, and a three year that looks like that, AGNC is on the list to cut. And BP is next. We got a BP five year of down a dollar thirty. I would call that or one point three percent rather. I would call that flat. Three year positive 1.28 so definitely flat those two cancel each other out don't they and if we look at the dividends 60 so a steady to slight increase slight increase so with with a neutral first indicator and second indicator is positive we're gonna go ahead and keep that and like I said we, we are taking out Royal Dutch Shell but we'll, we'll keep BP and it was slightly more positive anyway looking as far as those indicators are concerned. With the next one, Altria Group, ticker symbol MO. We're gonna look at the five year. It's up 1.14%. Three years, horrendous. It's down 25.47%. Now with this, you have to take into account some of the news that are that's around this industry. And in the last short amount of time, as you can see right here, we've had some big problems with the vaping. And they are big proponents of, of vaping and uh, they have a big stake in, in it, and that's that's probably what's happening there. But still, it, on the first one, we would definitely say no <laughs> on the first indicator. On second indicator, 52, 57, 61, 66, 70, 80. Those are huge gains on dividends. Are we gonna take this out? Yes, I think so. Anyway, because of that first indicator, it clearly doesn't meet on a three year, and we don't know what the future of, of vaping is gonna be. Let's just go ahead and get rid of that now, and we won't have to worry about it. Ford is the next company up. With Ford, we've got a five year that's horrendous, down 39.61. That three year that's horrendous as well. And it really doesn't matter what the dividends are doing, and as we can see, they're just flat, flat dividends. Even though it is a high yield, uh, we don't care because it really doesn't meet either of the, the technicals that we've set out today. And with that, that's a clear, let's take it off the list. Macy's. I have a sneaking suspicion that uh, this is not going to be good. 
So if we look at the five year, it's down 74%. I don't want to be a part of that at all. If I see that 53% in a three year, that's horrible. Okay, uh, dividends, 31, 36, 38, and staying flat. And with the first indicator not good, we're gonna add Macy's to the list of ones to remove. UVV is up next. They make a lot of uh, devices and, and things that are necessary for the tobacco producers. We will take a look at them. We are up 31.47% on the five year and then three years down 11.2% if we look at the dividend. So I would say those are, uh, we're gonna call that neutral because over the five year they've done well, but over the three year they have not. So I'm gonna call that indicator neutral. And for the dividends, 52, 53, 54, 55, 75, 76, 76. So we do have a pretty good increase in the dividends and a neutral first one. We're gonna keep UVV in there for now. Again, when we go over the, the numbers in another video, we might uh, decide differently. NYCB, that's New York Community Bank Corp. We'll take a look at them. We have a five year of negative 27% we have a three year of negative 25 percent so it does not meet our first indicator second indicator it's a flat dividend it pays 5.77 percent but we don't care because it doesn't meet our first indicator at all next up philip morris we got a five year at a positive 4.62 percent and a three year of down 5.66 percent i've already spoke about the news with um, this I would call this neutral though they've definitely done better than MO so we will look at the dividends dollar dollar two dollar four dollar seven dollar fourteen dollar seventeen so what we have here is a neutral first and a fantastic second indicator as far as the dividends so we're gonna keep Philip Morris six flags entertainment kinda like Cedar Fair where they do theme parks we'll take a look at our five-year we're up 5.64 percent. Three years down, 23.83 percent. So, I mean, that's a big three-year loss. I, I have to say the economy's been pretty good in this three years too, so people have more money to spend. What's happened with them? That might be something that we have to look into. I know the five-year looks positive, so we could, depending on what what the dividend is saying here, we could be okay, and leave it to the numbers that we dig into later. Maybe get some information about the management team, see what's going on exactly. So 52, 58, 64, 70, 78, 82, big jumps in 83. Big jumps in those dividends in this area and then uh, smaller ones recently, but it's still a positive indicator. So I wouldn't call this first one necessarily neutral because of the large loss in the three years, but we do see it on an upbound slightly. We'll leave it to the numbers on that one. So six flags we'll keep in. What we have found that uh, that we want to get rid of is NYCB, Macy's, Ford, MO, uh, British Tobacco, Cato, Royal Dutch Shell, AG&C, Macy's, and GlaxoSmithKline. To, in order to do this, it's very easy in, in M1 Finance. All you have to do is when you're in this pie, you say edit. We can go to the ones that we want to knock out. It said AG&C, MO, Cato, BTI. Ford, Glaxo, Smith Klein. We said Royal Dutch Shell. We said that's gone. Macy's is gone. NYCB taken out. Let's just go back through. NYCB, Macy's, Ford, MO, BTI. Yep. Cato, Royal Dutch Shell. Yep. AG&C. Yep. Macy's and Glaxo, Smith Klein. So we want to remove all those, and that leaves us with 66%. So the first thing I want to do is get this up because this is our anchor if you will and uh, we'll go ahead and put that at 50 let's see what that puts us up to here 91 percent perfect these other ones we wanted small positions in we have nine percent more to uh, give out here well it's easy if you if you do these four four and four and it still leaves us with six percent more so what we could do is take it this down to 45 we'll have 11 percent more to give out make each one of those five and that's a hundred and that's what we're gonna go with confirm changes 
and that's it for our maintenance for today that's what that's it's that easy you edit the pie you delete the ones that you don't want right now uh, you reallocate to the amount that you want and this is what we're gonna have okay so we got our high yield dividend uh, portfolio up we see that the five year now is 18.33 percent three years up 8.55 percent so those meet our first two uh, or our first indicator and we have we did drop our dividend yield to 4.931 percent there are ways that we could uh, raise that up I would like to see that and because our expense ratio is a lot more too because we put a lot more into the the anchor so if you want to play around with that you can and uh, get that back above five percent that's fine so what what you would do to do that is just lower your your target on the VYMI and then raise it in one of the other ones that has a higher or, or several of the other ones or maybe all of the other ones that have higher uh, yield than than this ETF and you could get it back above five what this is where we're gonna leave it for today would I consider that high yield 4.931 percent especially with an expense ratio of uh, 0.14 no but we'll play with that a different day and uh, we'll see if we can get it back above five at another time it's gonna set us up for an, another video where we're gonna go down and and look at it, each individual company and and that's probably gonna be several videos actually we'll see how it goes and thanks we'll see you next time